Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you are watching my videos on geography as well as related topics on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So, if you have not subscribed to our channel, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for geography videos and also remember to share the videos with others as well. Now, coming to the today's topic, we are going to discuss about the global and regional changes as well as imbalances in environment. That is important in geography because it is talking about not just space and time but scales of changes, scales of imbalances. So today what we are going to discuss is about the global factors, global drivers of these changes and imbalances as well as certain regional issues, regional challenges and drivers of imbalance. So let's learn ahead now. So now let's learn about the global and regional ecological changes and imbalances. Now when we say global and regional, the first thing that comes here to the picture is the scaling of the problem. Now remember geography is also about space, about time and also about a very important thing that is scale. So from local to global or global to regional what is happening in terms of ecology that is important here and remember not just the changes but also something called imbalances now if you remember the principles of ecology there is important principle of homeostasis that is a principle of natural balance in the ecosystem that nature does it itself right so homeostasis which is a self-regulating process by which all the biological systems tend to maintain their stability or balance for that matter is important for survival right and now here we are concerned with what are the imbalances that are being created at various levels because if we don't understand imbalances, we won't understand how the balance could be created or what could be the specific framework in which to understand that if this is the problem, so what would be the potential solutions for it, right? And not just as regional level, but also at global level, right? So that is important into understanding of this dynamic equilibrium that we say. Because equilibrium is what is the basic principle, right? everything should be balanced in ideal state that is what we are looking at right right from the isostatic adjustment in the concept of physical geography geomorphology that we understood was about the balance here we are talking about ecological changes and their imbalances and their balances as well right so this is important to understand that equilibrium is the, one of the themes in nature and its study that we always tend to give importance right so here we are talking about different scales of these changes and imbalances now let's elaborate about the factors about important points in this particular topic so imbalances at global scale and regional scale if you look at there are certain drivers at both the scales which are important drivers basically is about attributes or the factors of global change right so first of all is human population and not just population but its consumption of resources that is where we are looking at in terms of the global imbalance is being created as we grow in our size in population size right now we are estimated to be about 7.8 billion and which is supposed to cross 10 billion by 2050 right so the amount of pressure and resources is going to increase which is going to create ecological imbalance that is important to remember then energy usage and the related climate change that we are worried about that worldwide is still using fossil fuels for major activity, industrial activity, day-to-day -day activity. About 85% of all energy sources are coming from fossil fuel, that is oil, coal and natural gas, right? We don't have alternatives. So we are trying to gain more and more alternatives related to solar or wind energy or harnessing the tidal energy. But that's not sufficient. Still, we are 85% dependent. That is important point to remember. Then comes land use changes. Now, because of this rapid scale of development, right, that is especially urbanization and technology-based innovations that we have brought, what are we doing at the same time? We are changing the land use. Remember, land use change is not just about what is your choice to sow in your field. It is about a larger picture when everything changes according to human technology rather than what it should be in that natural regime in that particular climate in that particular soil so if we are changing that usage of the land 
in accordance with nature it's good but if we are going against it using our technology that is a problem that creates imbalance right that's happening then we are looking at the pollution and pollution is the by product of all economic developmental activities we know that waste material products and it's hampering our health as well as our living conditions all around the world then comes ozone layer depletion then comes loss of biodiversity human health problem already we are facing a pandemic and we know the status of our current immunity levels and our health conditions right now then we have desertification and deforestation problems at large scale happening then we have food contamination which is a problem everywhere because of which we have these huge nutrition issues and food security problems as well right so these are major drivers or what we say as factors at a global level which is concerned with all anthropogenic activities or what we know as human influences which we talked in details in the last lecture as well so these imbalances are what we need to balance through our management that's where the next part is the ecosystem management part right because we are creating imbalances so we have to bring back the balance right so at regional level or for that matter at if we look at our country level india level there are certain points that we must remember in terms of ecological imbalance those factors are degradation of land and soil erosion that is very common in himalayan region in plains we are land of river and you know we have so many things that are important in terms of deforestation huge population concentration and increasing requirement of agricultural land then deforestation is associated problem with that then we have faulty utilization of water resources remember a country such rich in rivers is facing water shortage that is such an irony for a country like ours right so water resource problem then environmental problems of faulty mining practices right so our mines open cast mines and say many places we are creating deforestation issues because of mining activities right then industrial and atmospheric pollution are definitely one of the major drivers as well especially in urban areas every year we see that the case of delhi and other cities as well right so if you look into this particular data set you have your headings here and what is area affected so here is the problem and here is the area here in million square kilometers so total geographical area 3287263 right 3287263 square kilometers right so about 32 million square kilometer we have and from that area area subject to water and wind issues 144 then area degraded through specific problems like ravines salinity water logging that is related to gully erosion about 30 so what you see we have variety of problems and their values here right you can check this data from other sources as well i have just taken it from some internet source just to say that what are the levels of imbalances in india in whichever sectors we are looking at regional level or for that matter at country level we say right so if you look into these heads there's are important area values you can check and i see some problems here in area as well but what we are concerned about is not the area here we are talking about all these headings which we need to focus in terms of management of balance right so it's a huge area which is impacted under these headings of degradation of land damages and shifting cultivation flooding drought prone area all these problems that we see here so these are major important factors these are major important areas of change that we need to understand then comes these change and imbalances story further and remember before and after in terms of industrial revolution in last 200 to 250 years what we have done with this earth right earth was almost covered by forest for more than 80% of india was covered under forest before industrial revolution right but after that what happened we actually are right now at 21.67% only so this is the level of deforestation that we have done green village and green urban areas are new concept that are coming in no non degradation waste were generated in that particular time right the water of the river pond and lake was as pure as to drink and now we are talking about water conservation again right and now green village and green building concept is coming up which is coming from the ancient from past itself right then air was unpolluted earlier now it's a huge level of pollution global warming and climate change name were unknown till early 2007 right then what we see is people close to nature where the main things that we learn from the past that people used to live in sync with nature before industrialization happened and this pace of development took place right so we are talking about a change that has happened in last 200 years the unprecedented level of change that is important to remember here now 
what are these changes about these are about ecological changes and the problems related to it which we have discussed in various lectures previous to this lecture as well so here we are just pointing out for revision purpose climate change related global warming pollution in terms of air water noise soil right all these are alarming level today waste disposal problems ozone depletion problem nuclear disaster possibilities right the militarization of space is also happening and also leading to environmental damage wars are happening right so what we see that all these important points are all anthropogenic human induced remember to use the word human induced or anthropogenic when you are writing your answer then biodiversity losses land degradation desertification resource depletion acid rain oil spill you name it and you'll find it so many things are happening for the imbalances and which are causing lots of ecological problems around us right so what we look at is some case studies of different zones if we want to so what is happening in tropical zone if you look into this so in tropical zone non harmonious relationship is already there since long time we have been exploited and destructive remember tropical zone is a rich biodiversity zone so lots of forest species animal species both are dominant right and we are exploiting it and destroying it with our own vested interest so economic activities amazon forest are the best example which are being destroyed gradually we see that construction of large dams happening that are also in news right agricultural expansion mass deforestation marginalization of communities and forest dwellers in many parts of the world we have seen right so this is majorly into tropics what we see then if you go to the savanna biome you see lots of problems in savanna as well we have learned about this in details if you want to know about savanna biomes and its problems go to the biogeography playlist and look into the details there so what we find burning of vegetation increasing human population encroaching there rapid rate of expansion into agricultural land right enormous increase in number of domesticated in animals so remember domesticated animals are increasing in this particular biome it means the natural character is being altered so that is important point to remember then let's talk about something else here that is important the impact of human activities has resulted into shrinking of the areas of grassland if you see this forest fires this particular tractors and threshers coming into the field and you know because the increase in terms of demand of land is there because we are growing in numbers we are encroaching on the natural ecosystems that is important right so all the communities are being affected plants animals and the forest dwellers and who people live there the villagers the locals so everybody is being deprived because of developmental pressures in somewhat the some ways right so number of animals and their total population are gradually decreasing right so that is important to understand in terms of the impacts then if you look into the mediterranean region problem you find similar things like rapid and abrupt land use changes due to developmental pressure and urban sprawl habitat fragmentation due to transport infrastructure resource over exploitation and pollution right and climate change is important addition on everything heat waves drought overall temperature rise and resilience and adaptation capacity of forest is being exhausted gradually so this is happening in the mediterranean biome right so this is important point now let's look into the arctic region and it has been in news so these are the case studies that you could use in your answers sometime so recent development in arctic region discovery of minerals you see gold mine in alaska you see kenai peninsula alaska copper in rankin inlet right canada then what we have is great lake area iron ore deposits in labrador gaining importance then rich deposits of iron ores at kiruna and galiver in sweden area then arctic seaboard of eurasia is important in terms of new ports being made there we have seen oil spill in russia as well in news right so air pollution climate change mining drilling all these are threats to ecology there in arctic region so what you see here is the case study of any particular natural biome we see the imbalances and most of the imbalances here we are talking about anthropogenic bio imbalances we are talking about human systems which are getting into this particular problems right so because of human systems there is a problem in the entire ecology and which in return is impacting the same human system right the same anthropogenic regime of life right so that is important in terms of understanding that it is not just one way relationship of influence or impact or imbalance the imbalance it means the entire system goes into imbalance and again the problem is faced by entire human race as well so that is important to understand that it's a cyclic concept when in a system something goes off it will affect the entire system and come back 
to the point source again as well. So now, when we have talked in details about the global and regional scales, their challenges and issues that is important to environment and ecology, in the sessions to come, we'll be discussing more on the management and conservation aspect of environment. So stay tuned, stay safe, all the best wishes.